to uh, helping entrepreneurs clarify and monetize their mission to change the world and leave a legacy. And I'm joined today in the Mission Mojo Show with Katrina Sawa from Jumpstart Your Marketing. Hi, Katrina. Hey, Nicola. How are you? Awesome. I'm really good. Thank you. And uh, we'd love for you to say hi out there. Let us know who's with us. We're talking about marketing. How do you jumpstart your marketing? And boy, oh boy, is it a minefield. Uh, but first, Katrina, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, how you got to be doing what you're doing right now? Yeah, you know, I used to be, I've been in sales and marketing all my life, actually, from age 16 to now. I mean, in various different jobs, I was very reluctant to go into the corporate arena uh, after college. Actually, I graduated as a bartender because I was like, no, I don't want to get a job. And my mom was so proud. <laughs> and then I did find a job that I really liked, which was advertising sales at the local newspaper. And through that job, I was so ingrained in the community. I was joined a lot of chambers. I was networking quite a bit. And I just realized that so many entrepreneurs and business owners had no idea what they were doing. They loved what they were doing, but they didn't know all the different aspects of running a business and how to really be successful and stop working so hard. They were working so hard and going out of business like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, well, we'll get to that in a moment. But, um, yeah, absolutely. A lot of people going out of business because they don't know how to market themselves or that they should market themselves. And I, I've been in sales and marketing when I actually come to think about it um, for a very long time, 20 years of online marketing. And uh, in the beginning, I, I actually did quite a lot of contract work when I was living in London for companies like Virgin Records and uh, McDonald's and Cadbury. And I get to see how the big guys uh, do all of their marketing and the big budgets and working with some really great, fantastic clients. But when it comes to being an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, uh, the, the budget was uh, <laughs> it's substantially different. And <laughs> you've got to take a completely different approach. And we're going to be talking about uh, that today. So should we take a moment, Katrina, to just talk about, you know, what you, where you see marketing is today in terms of the online, offline world? Gosh, if you are not online or really getting savvy about what to do online, you are so missing the boat and you're way behind already. And uh, we, you can't avoid it anymore. So now keep in mind, I'm, I'm still very much offline marketer. I still go to networking events and conferences and I do direct mail. I send stuff in the mail, you know, uh, and I make phone calls. Okay. Which is not the norm for an online marketer. They don't typically do those things at all. I find that it's a great compliment to the online marketing and it adds that extra touch that I think is missing in just the online world when people are just online sending you emails and videos and that's all they're doing. So it's not, it's a lot of one way pushing. Whereas if you can really connect with people and get more engaged with them in many different ways, I think you'll see bigger success. And yeah. it's harder and harder to get seen on email these days because our emails, oh my God, we were just talking about this before we started, that our email inboxes are just like flooded. I can't even find my clients in there anymore. It's crazy. I'm trying to it do all is, It oh. is crazy. Yeah. And I agree with you. It's like, you know, I stuck an email out to my people and I said that, you know, the, the online world is, is changing. It's getting harder and harder, but you still can't ignore it for a number of reasons. You know, like I don't like Twitter. I, I mean, I just really don't like Twitter, but I have to be on Twitter yeah. because Google looks at your social media profile to decide whether or not they're going to, you know, rank you as an expert. Right. So, and then if, if you're doing a whole lot of offline marketing, people are going to research you on Google and they're going to find you and they're going to see how big you are, what you're doing, what, what's out there. But as far as actually marketing to people and getting clients and customers online, it's changing really fast. And it's, uh, there's a whole lot of things that were working yesterday that, uh, that aren't working today. And we're going to start sorting that out as we go. So what I really love about your approach is the online offline approach right? It's like if you're spending all your time doing it online, you're missing out on the growth that's happening offline because everybody's overwhelmed online. But at the same time, if you're offline and you're not online, then you're not, you're not seen as anybody. So, whoa, how confusing is this? So, um, 
and, and I got an email from somebody saying, oh, my goodness, <laughs> really? So talk to me about mindset and attitude to, before we start going into specific tips on, you know, what what is working today. What kind of a mindset or attitude do you think entrepreneurs need to take in their marketing, given that they really don't want to market themselves? They'd rather just deliver their goodies. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> the number one thing is be open to a lot of different opportunities and options. And don't be closed-minded or saying, this doesn't work, or I tried it. And, and in my experience, when someone says they've tried it, means they tried it once, or they've tried something, but they probably didn't try it good enough. They didn't try it the right way, or they didn't do it the right way. Like when I was in advertising, people would say, well, I'll just run this ad once and see how it does, and then I will... Um, maybe run some more after that. And it's like, well, you're going to pay, you know, 60 pages of a newspaper and you want this one little ad to be seen and get tons of results. And if you don't get them, you're not going to run more. That's just ridiculous. It's about frequency. It's about being seen over and over and the, as a leader in your industry. So there's that. There's the people that think they're going to do something once and then write off that whole strategy as a not working, gonna not going to work for them, which is wrong because they probably just didn't learn how to do it right. The second thing I see <coughs> that people need to stop making decisions on what they're going to do in their marketing based on what they like and don't like being done to them. So if you don't like people that email you daily or 17 times in one month, um, which means you're only going to email your people once or twice, well, I'm sorry, but you're gonna, not going to get any response once or twice. People may not see but one out of every four or five or six of your emails. You know, So if they don't see every one out of five of your emails, they, that means they're not seeing something for you for three months if you only do two emails a month. Okay? Yeah. That's not enough. So don't make decisions on what you're going to do based on what you don't like done to you. You don't have to be salesy and pushy and rude in the verbiage, but the actions and activities, some things you need to do on a more often basis. Yeah, I'm yeah, just, just trying to make decisions based, based on what you're doing. doing. Um, I'm getting a bit of feedback here. Um, love for you guys to say hello, by the way, as you're checking in with us. And I think that, um, you know, like I got this email, um, Katrina, uh, yesterday when I sent the email out to everybody about this uh, this live call. And, and and she said, oh, my goodness, so now you're telling me that I've got to do this? It's like, you know, like it's overwhelming. There's so many gurus out there telling you do this, do this, do this, do this. And the way I look at it is that you've got to find your mojo, and I'm sure you're going to start talking about this when you go into specifics on what 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 marketing um, can you can do. But you've got to find out where your mojo is and what what works for you in terms of how you want to be offering and giving your gifts to the world. So so you can just quieten down everything, right? Because not everybody gets results with blogging because it's not their thing. Not everybody gets results with doing videos because it's not their thing. Not everybody gets their results doing meetups because it's not their thing. So it's a kind of like a balance of finding out what where your mojo is, like where you best can present yourself and then creating strategy. Which would, would you agree that strategy is really important? So you don't end up doing everything everybody's telling you to do and then getting no results. Right. I agree that you need to pick the top three or four different marketing strategies. And I teach about 20 different ones and everything from uh, social media to publicity, getting you know, um, direct mail, uh, speaking, uh, everything you just mentioned, blogging, you know, email marketing um, and so many more. There's about 20 different strategies that I teach. I have like this wheel. And not everybody needs to do every single one of them, but some of them are easier than you think to implement uh, when you're just getting, so if you like video, someone can transcribe that and put it into an article. Someone can transcribe that and put it into tweets and social media posts. Someone can transcribe that and put it into uh, an article that you're going to go try to get into a, a newspaper or a magazine and actually get published in a print publication, right? So there's lots of different things you can do to repurpose the content you are creating. So if video is not your thing, um, which I would, I don't care. I really don't care. That's the one strategy that, you've got to start embracing in my mind. 
Um, if you, even if you hate it, you hate the way you look. I had one client one time who was 72 and I was like, you've got to get on video. You're so dang cute when you talk about your stuff. And she's like, but my neck, I got wrinkles all over my neck. And I said, put a scarf around it and go. Who cares? Right. Or they don't know what camera to use. And it's like, just start talking. Who cares? Get it upgraded later or whatever. Like you have your light on. I forgot to put my light on today. I'm like, I don't want to reach and put my light on, right. To shine light in my face. But, um, it's not about being perfect. It's just about being in front of more people. And if you keep letting your own blocks get in the way, you're, this is your head trash. Like I'm, I got wrinkles or I don't like the way I sound or I don't like how my, I use my hands like this all the time, which I do. And I, you know, I can't help it. That's just the way I am. And either you're going to like me or you're not going to like me. And too bad. The wrong people will go away and the right people will keep watching and listening. So yeah. But what I was saying was, if you like to write, then write an article and let somebody else maybe create a video around it that maybe doesn't have you in it, but it have images and pictures and words in it. And you can still create video and still have video, um, some kind of animation going. You can still take those articles and repurpose it. You can do blog posts on other people's blogs. You know, we were talking the other day, you and I, about blog swapping. You give me an article, I'll give you one. We'll put, you know, not only does it create more content for our own blogs if we take guest articles, but it's um, it leverages your relationships and gives people opportunities to get in front of each other's um, following. So, yeah. Yeah. You've mentioned a couple of things there, like I want to talk more about the connection when we start looking at specific strategies, although you've just outlined a strategy there. But you said somebody else can do this, somebody else can do that. Like you write the blog, someone else can make a video for you. Um, you, you do this and then somebody else can repurpose the content into your social yeah. media. So Dele I want to talk about, <laughs> what was that, sorry? I said delegate. Delegate. So I want to talk about the death of the solopreneur because this is where I think a lot of people are getting hung up. It's like in the old days, it was so much easier for you to just be one person out there building a business, you know, being a tradesman or a woman um, and trading your time for uh, and services for, uh, for money. But it's like with today, with everything, especially with social media, there's too much for one person to do. So you have to delegate. So how do you know what marketing to delegate and what not to delegate? Well, um, actually, I have a checklist on something like that. And I'm actually developing a little training on that because it's so it's coming up more and more every day with clients. And I, I'm. I'm getting really good at teaching people how to delegate better and what to delegate because I had to learn it all myself. I had to learn um, how to, which things to delegate first, second, third, and all that kind of thing. And it was not an easy process. And nobody really taught that back then, you know, 15 years ago when I started my business. Nobody taught you how to delegate. They just said, well, hire an assistant. I'm like, okay, well, you know, and you go hire some random assistant, but you don't know what to put in the ad to make them, you know, to make pre-qualify them. You don't know what questions to ask to hire. I mean, I didn't go through HR training. I didn't go, I mean, I became a marketing consultant. I didn't learn HR, but yet I have to be an <laughs> HR uh, be vice president of HR. That's what I am, right? So you have to kind of learn that. And now there's a lot of HR coaches and mentors out there, thank God, because so many people need that, but you're not, some people are like not even willing to pay for that. Are you kidding me? You need to learn how to build your business. And that's one of the team members you need. Um, you know, luckily, <coughs> luckily for some of my clients, I've been through all that and I can teach some of the stuff, you know, for what they need. And yeah. now I'm building a resource of, of <coughs> assistant type people, referrals, graphic designers, web designers, techie people. You got to have people, um, whether they don't have to be full time, for God's sakes, you know. Yeah. And if you exactly. And if you don't if you don't have people doing strategic things, then you are going to be going around and around in circles and you are going to be overwhelmed and and you do it step by step. So I know the, the very first time that I hired a VA, I wrote a list of all the things that I really wasn't enjoying doing. And I and I hired a few of them. 
and I got them all to do little bits and pieces. And then at the end of the two weeks, I decided to hire one person who was performing the best. So instead of just trying one and see how they go and then trying another and see how they go, I used that strategy of hiring a few, but I, I gave them less hours to just see who the best performer was. But like I, I'm hearing this a lot from a number of futurists is that the, the, the solopreneur is dead. And it's it's getting harder and harder online to compete. You know, with social media now, it used to be easy to just make some posts and then you get some clients and customers. But now Facebook, for instance, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, they want you paying for advertising. So they're not showing your posts, right? right. And then and then there's a webinar. Webinar is, was is, has been my core stable way of converting people into clients and customers. And now attendance is at an all time low and conversion is at an all time low. So it's not that you that that you end up abandoning these things, except the strategy just needs to change. So the attitude that I really feel we need to have is is embrace change and and if you're in business you have to have to have to accept that change is happening faster and faster and you can't do it on your own so you might need to bring in a partner a collaboration or a team because you just can't keep up on your own right that's why coaching's become so popular i mean you can't keep up on your own you otherwise otherwise you're going to be really small if you do because you can yeah. only much yourself. I mean, if you're okay making twenty to forty thousand dollars a year as a coach or consultant or whatever, because you can only reach so many people and talk to so many people yourself and make so many sales, then that's fine. But if you really want to, you know, there's a lot of talk online about right now about um, the world, right? And I did an article the other day about the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Like, what is going on, right? It's like there's Mother Nature is not, is pissed off at us and doing all this stuff that I swear to God wasn't happening as um, often as it was when I was a kid. Um, and all the horrible tragedies and, and murders and all this kind of stuff that's going on in the world, um, it's not about, it's not about politics in my mind. It's, it's, it's more about, um, let's let's all do what we're supposed to be doing. Let's make a lot of money. So I got tr totally totally criticized by somebody the other day talking about why you make more money. You need to do something about this. Well, if I can make a lot more money, I can do something about this because I can give to people. I can I can help people. I can make people happier. There's a lot of different things. Like I'm not articulating at the moment about that you can do when good people make a lot more money. A lot of good can be done, right? When bad yeah. people make a lot of money, then of course we're gonna have bad, bad stuff. Bad people done, or they can sit on their high horse and have their fancy cars and houses or whatever. I still want a fancy car and house, but I want to do a lot more good. And so yeah. I just want to empower people to do what they're here to do on the planet and make a lot more money doing what they love. So stop thinking so small. Yeah. Stop thinking all about oh I don't need to make that much or you know I'm okay with about four thousand a month and, and what I make and no stop it you need to I mean if you have gifts you need to make more because there's people there's billions of people on the planet there's plenty of people to buy from you plenty okay yep so yeah. have big goals I hear, you. I hear you the more good people who have more money the more good that will be done on the planet and the more bad people that have the money because we don't care we're just going to go oh let me just have a small piece of the pie the more greedy those people get the more they take and the more bad they do on the planet <clears throat> and I think that that's the relationship that um, you know with money the purpose part and the money that I'm all about obviously because I that's what I teach but but that's great. So we're going to move on to some specific strategies. And before we do, I just want to get across this one point of what I'm noticing in my marketing, because, you know, for those of you who, who aren't aware, I've been internet marketing for 20 years now, and I see the trends come and go. And I'm seeing this, um, this trend of things just getting more and more and more expensive because the more, the big guys are taking over as they always do. And the new trend will show up. So I'm building my business more offline now. And I want you to talk a little bit about that. And one of the reasons, 
Katrina, I'm doing that is because I see a time where, you know, like if the internet goes down, then people lose money overnight. When Google changes its, its logarithms, people lose money overnight because their ads are no longer showing. When Facebook changes its mind about who it's going to allow to advertise, people lose money overnight. So it's not secure enough for you to build your business 100% offline or online rather. You also need to build it offline. And I think it's good because I think we should all be connecting with each other. What do you think? Yeah, <clears throat> it's it. You, I've been saying this for years. It's like you can't rely on Facebook, Twitter, all these places because they could change the rules like that. We're not in charge yeah. of that. That's not our business. You yeah. might, some people keep their whole websites on Facebook. I'm like, what are you doing? Get your own presence, get your own identity. Um, even if you're in a network marketing, don't just have a page on their website. Get your own identity. Now, if the internet goes down, yeah, you better have a phone that works, right? I mean, the people that are scared of the phone, they're not going to make any money if we have no internet anymore, like, what? because they're not going to call people, right? And they're not even getting phone numbers. So one of the biggest things for me is, and I tell clients, you've got to get the phone numbers these days. you got to get start getting mailing addresses. So figuring out in your marketing what you can do beyond the initial opt-in of the name and email. Okay, what can I give to you to get your mailing address? What can I give to you in order to get your phone number? Because I we need to start reaching out in those different ways. I send postcards. Whenever I get someone in the um, someone's direct mail uh, or mailing address, I send postcards in the mail to follow up. I send uh, cards to people, especially clients and stuff. I send actual cards, right? And that's what I. That's what can happen when you delegate more. I just hired another personal assistant for my office and in, in my office here because a lot of these little personal touches weren't getting done and it's been bugging me, right? And so I want her to get more stuff done so that I have time to make that more personal connection because people nice. have hired me because they said, I came to your event or I hired you because you actually physically reached out and called me yourself. Nice. So. Nice. Yeah. And I do that too with my events as well. So offline yeah. stuff, I mean, yeah. your own live events. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> the days of thousand person events, there's still out some out there, but most are, dwindling down to a couple of hundred and those who were at a couple of hundred are probably looking at a hundred. Um, you know, I've never even had a hundred people at one of my events before, but they've been amazing. Right. And I can, mm -hmm. I've made six figures in uh, a weekend uh, multiple times. So you don't have to have hundreds of people at some big online. If the right yeah. people come, the right people will sign up. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a matter of gearing our visions or re-gearing our visions for the way the world is changing. Because like I have uh, a promoter who promotes all of those big people and she's saying that those days of everybody rushing to the table and buying those programs are over, that even the big guys are now having to rethink what are their, you know, what are they going to do? How are they going to work their strategies? This is, you know, like things are changing. So we've got to change our vision. So if you've had a vision of that, um, it's got to shift because the, the world is changing and we can't keep selling buggy whips if there are, they aren't making buggies anymore, right? So talk to me about some offline strategies that you think work well with the offline, online kind of combination. Well, speaking is the biggest thing. I mean, yes, you can speak online and webinars and things like that. But when you can speak at a live event in front of 20 to 50 people, I've even spoken to a room of three people, four people before. Um, the person that invited me, the person above them in the company, and then one of my clients already, and then somebody I didn't know. There was four people, and I spoke to them. And out of all of that, when it was all said and done, after all my follow-up, I've made 7,500 bucks yeah. from various people in the room. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> I have speakers that will decline an event unless there's 50 people in a room. I'll fly across the country for 20, you know, like seriously, if it's the right audience, it can be so powerful, especially though. It's not just about speaking in front of them, but it's having the systems in the back end for the follow-up and the right programs, products, and services to um, have people enroll in. So it, you have to have both. You can't just speak and not have anything to sell or not know how to take the, 
get them enrolled and you can't enroll them in a hundred dollar thing and make a bunch of money that's gonna I mean the volume isn't there so you've got to have uh, I'm gonna say the balls the balls enough to charge a good amount of money for something that you're doing right yeah you have a high-end program um, so that's five thousand ten thousand maybe fifteen thousand or lots more is fine too but you have to have something high-end uh, in this day and age or it's gonna take a lot of work to make a lot of money yeah yeah it's like i i look at it as a chocolate box you've got to have a chocolate box with lots of different offers at different prices that serve the same niche so that if people walk away not buying your high-end offer they can buy a middle range offer and if you've got people there that really want to work with you and you don't offer the high-end offer you've got money walking out of the table so do you uh, like I do often speak at meetups like I think for people who are starting out looking for speaking events attending meetups with the intention of getting speaking events and and then looking at other meetups and getting speaking events I find that the best way to to start right because it, it's easy if the platform is there and people are looking for speakers do you do you do that circuit or yes I do I actually run a meetup every month myself for a sec, uh, in my area for speakers and entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and I, we bring in speakers from the group uh, and mm -hmm. then I teach a little thing too but yes I I look at other meetups to speak at so I know a lot of people in my area when I go to a different city for example and I'm traveling to a conference I'll look to see what events are in that city the day before or the day after the conference because I might extend my trip a little bit if there's a good event to speak at or network at right so yeah. strategies that I do when I travel as well <clears throat> So we had this we had this conversation when we were talking about let's do this interview and get some ideas out there for people. Um, my my number one strategy is going to other people's events because um, you're getting to know people, you're telling people who you are, and if you have your radar on for clients rather than I'm going as a participant, I usually walk away with ten grand worth of sales at other people's speaking events, and I know you do that too. I do, and it's and it's you just have to be prepared, right? So I talk about for live events, I talk about the before, the during, and the after. What you have to do to prepare, and I have a whole video series on YouTube for it. It's absolutely free, but it's what you do to prepare before you go to an event, whether you're a speaker, an exhibitor, or an attendee, and then what you do during the event to work the room, so to speak, without being salesy and pushy and annoying and all that and obvious that you're trying to get clients. And then what you do after in the follow-up with the emails and the phone calls and the direct mail. But the the if you're not prepared, like one of the things is to have order forms with you or have your program flyers. I mean, when I went to this event a couple weeks ago, I literally had my mastermind uh, brochures in my bag the whole time. I had a couple different order forms. I had a flyer for my speaker training. I had, um, uh, my books, I had a few books for sale. I would put the book on the table when I sat down at the conference, and then inevitably somebody at the table would ask me and someone would buy it, right? So then yeah. I would get another one out the next day and I'd put that one out. Yeah. You yeah. know, if you're not prepared to sell, it's gonna be really hard. So being prepared to sell, um, I actually just signed up somebody at this, that event for my mastermind. So. I'm, you know, they didn't want that the program that the person was offering, and we had a great conversation, and so she signed up for mine. So yeah, yeah, and I get that a lot too. People say, "Oh, I think I need to work with you," because they and and you've got to have your elevator pitch right, which I'm sure that's one of your videos on, you know, what you're preparing for. What do you do? Hi, I'm Nicola Grace, the Mission Mentor, and I help entrepreneurs clarify and monetize their mission to change the world and leave a legacy. And people will say to me, oh, I think I need to speak to you first, right? Because I need to have my business ideas sorted and I want it aligned to my purpose. And and it's it can be as simple as that. So it's not so much selling, you're just offering what it is that you do and then you get in, got engaged in a conversation. One of the things I do too, because I'm useless with business cards. <laughs> so one of the things I do is I take a photo of them and they go, have you got a business card? And I say, no, but let's get, let's get more intimate. Let's get connected. Let's take a photo of each other, post it on Facebook, tag it, message each other. Then I've got them in my messenger and bang, I can, I can then send them some follow up information. And that makes it really simple and easy because my, you know, my VA can actually just go in and post it for me. 
So that's a, I use that strategy and people love that and then they remember you. Yeah, and I'm starting to do that too. In fact, I've been, uh, when I go to events, I usually have like a half a dozen books or a dozen books and I'll take the picture with my book. Uh, okay, so back up. I usually give my books to, uh, mm -hmm. like, so if you see me at an event, sometimes I'll give them. Every once in a while, someone will just offer to pay, and of course, I'll sell it. But sometimes I seek out the people who really need my book. And I'll be like, even if I hear them across the room sharing on the mic, I'll walk up to them later and said, you know, do you read books? Because what question you struggled with, I, I think my book might help for you, and I'd love to gift it to you. And they usually accept it, right? And then we'll take a picture, and I'll do that exact same thing, is I'll tag them on Facebook. But that reminds me to, those are like usually the hot prospects from that conference. And um, I actually do get their business cards because um, that's how I keep track. Like I usually see, I have little stacks of business cards because I'm really good with making notes of what I need to call somebody back on or what I need. And I have a whole strategy on how to do stuff with their card. Like a little star means they're hot prospect. A JV means it could be a good referral, like a partnership or thing. Right. Um, I might send them something for free, like a free uh, gift or something that I promised or connect them. A lot of times I'm connecting like, oh, you need to meet so-and-so. I need to connect you with so-and-so. Then I'll do a, an introduction on email with them. Um, that's, I think, really golden. But also getting the business card usually gets the mailing address, the phone number, and all that other stuff that they should right. have. Yeah, and I should probably quack rip on myself and do, <laughs> do that myself because I'm not that good at it. Well, a lot of those big gurus out there, they don't have business cards. Right? Do you have a business card, Mr. Brendan Richard or whatever? He probably doesn't, I'm guessing, right? No offense. I love Brendan. He's great. But uh, – but so no, he's not Brendan Bashad anymore. He's just Brendan. Like right. He's got Brendan.com, right? He's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. a lot of those people don't don't do business cards because yeah. first of all, they don't want you to contact them. They don't want to have a phone conversation. They have funnels for that, right? They have people for that. Yeah. So um I don't know. I don't want to be that even if I was making millions of dollars, which unfortunately I'm not yet, um, but even if I was making millions of dollars, I still don't think I would just put a team under me so there was this gate so nobody could get to me, you know? I don't know. Yeah, and I think that's really important distinction between where we're moving to and where we've come from because um, have you read the book um, by John Nesbitt, Megatrends 2000? And I recommend everybody get that. Uh, he talked a lot about um, this thing called high-tech, high-touch. It came out in the early 90s or late 80s, I think. And he said, the more high-tech we become, the more we're going to crave touch and intimacy. And this is what I see happening online. People are craving connection. So that's why email marketing is, is you know, people are being bombarded with emails because there's no connection um, and it's not working as well as it did or webinars. And, and people are wanting to, they, you know, there's a renaissance of, networking and getting out and going to meetups and getting out and going to speaking events and what have you live events there's a renaissance happening because people are craving the um the touch and i'm gonna i'm gonna put that in the a chat box in a minute high tech high touch think about that so what are some of the other high touch connective things that you recommend people and then tell us how people can find out you said you've got uh, some strategies like where can we send them to find out you know those strategies that you're talking about yeah so um, as far as offline stuff goes the speaking the attending events um, exhibiting at events of course which give you a more opportunity uh, on social media I have a very key strategy though uh, for messaging people and, and a lot of people are starting to catch on to this kind of a, a thought process well hey if I just message people privately on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or wherever um, I can tell them about my thing or my event or give them a link to my thing they're not doing it very well however okay because you just kind of get this like spammy kind of message and so people aren't thinking through the process they want you to come to their webinar today so they're messaging you today about this thing in an hour and it just says hey free webinar blah 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 link and I'm like I first of all I don't even know your name like you might be a friend of mine but we haven't connected in like two years since I met you so yeah. there's a better approach there's a better approach 
to really building that relationship with the person first. It's not a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am thing on this yeah. kind of strategy. It's yeah. not wham, bam. And, and if you want a wham, bam, you got to do Facebook ads, really. I mean, you got to yeah. spend money to get people to click and go to the thing and buy the thing and whatever. I mean, that's an off, that's like a, you know, it's be, it's very common now to spend money on Facebook ads and we've only dabbled. I haven't even done a whole launch or campaign or anything or invested too much money. I'm going to be though, because it seems to be the way that people are really building their stuff online a lot these days. And yeah. It's the, it's Facebook advertising is the number three strategy, but it's cha the game is changing and it really depends on what your audience is. There are some people that are killing it on Facebook because they've got the they've got the money to spend and, and, and the, the days of being able to spend a small budget are over. And I know this because I've been doing Facebook advertising for two years now. Mm -hmm. And a lead used to cost me five dollars and now it costs me forty dollars. So it's going up and up and up and up unless you start spending big money. And by big money, I'm talking about a $10,000 budget a month. So yeah. what I'm what I'm doing with my Facebook strategy, and some of you might have even been coming to me with this, is that I'm taking people to my blog and I've got a video where I'm educating and I'm talking about my, you know, about solving a particular problem. And then there's a pop up that invites them to the webinar or to my lead generation. And then I repixel to, uh, to remarket to the people that have been to my blog. And that's a much more savvy, savvy way of doing, um, Facebook ads. Because they do work, you've just you've just got to be prepared to put the money down, and you've got to have a system at the back at the back end that's going to convert. Yeah, it's like I know people are making millions of dollars on Facebook ads uh, from their Facebook ad stuff, but they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to make no, money. They're, no, they're spending they're spending a million dollars because I, I I know that inside. And here's the other thing that I want to tell you guys too, because you know nobody else is telling you, so I'm going to. I'm a part of a really high level mastermind with somebody who's in a high level mastermind with Facebook itself. So all of the big guys out there, all of the big advertisers, they are in a high level mastermind every single month with Facebook. So their accounts get flagged as preferential treatment. Mm. So when they come and start teaching their strategies, a lot of them aren't telling you that they're working with Facebook. So, so they're, they're in a different class. Right. So so their strategy is working for them because of that connection. But, um, you know, and, and this is really important because when I do Facebook advertising and I'm going, I'm not getting the reach. And so I up my budget and I'm still not getting the reach and I up my budget and I'm still not getting the reach. Right. So what's going on? And I found out that Facebook do give you preferential treatment. One, if you spend a lot more and two, if you're in their mastermind and nobody's saying that. So I'm saying that. So if you're going to do Facebook, a good strategy is audience building. And I loved your strategy too about private messaging. Once you see somebody's liked your post or engaged in it or what have you, you know, start building a relationship. Start having some private conversations with people. We can do, we do so much. I have a whole strategy where you can reach 50 people a day. Um, <coughs> wow. Funny. So how can... How can we get more of you, Katrina? Like, where can we send people to? Like, you said your YouTube channel. So after this event, I'm going to drop some links here where you can go to Katrina's uh, YouTube channel because she said she has this video series that shows you how to prepare to go to other people's and get <laughs> events and get clients <laughs> and customers uh, and some other. I'm sure you've got lots of other great stuff as well. But don't you have a Jumpstart Your Marketing gift as well too? Like a if you go to jumpstartyourmarketing.com, Right on the homepage there is the Jumpstart Your Biz Kit. Or you can just go to jumpstartyourbizkit.com and go straight there. It's a, it's a revenue producing checklist of the 17, 17 things that you can basically do in 20 minutes or less every day that most of them cost you nothing to do that are just these little things, these little ideas that, that actually can build relationship, get you reach, find you a speaking gig, get publicity, all these different kinds of things that people don't think because a lot of times they're staring at their screen going, what should I do to get a client today? Well, pull out this list and do three or four of them and it'll get you momentum to get you some clients. Nice. It comes with the audio, like a whole audio training on the top 10 revenue producing activities and marketing strategies. So nice. yeah, I'm, I'm just starting that in, in here for people. 
If you go to jumpstartyourmarketing.com, you can get it right there on the homepage. But then there's also, not to overwhelm people, but I do have a resources page, a free trainings page, with a few other options on there. So if you want to get started speaking, there's an audio for that. If you want to watch a webinar about jumpstarting your business, there's one for that. If you want to get my book, Love Yourself Successful, you can get my book for free. Just pay shipping and handling and you get it for free. Nice. So there's a lot of nice. stuff. Awesome. That's really great. So has anybody got any specific questions they want to ask before we wrap up for today? Um, what What's working for you or what, what you've done and what hasn't worked? And I've seen um, a whole lot of new people have come on board that weren't here in the beginning. And one of the things that um, Katrina said right at the beginning is that one of the biggest problems people have is they try something once and because it didn't work, they they uh, they they give up and they don't try again. So Katrina, I might just have you talk a little bit more about that while we're waiting for some questions to come in. If anybody's going to ask us any questions, yeah, because um, I hear this over and over and over, especially with social media, the strategy. Okay, um, <clears throat> they've tried Facebook. Well, or I I have someone doing my Facebook. Well, what exactly are they doing? It's like most people don't understand. They don't have a strategy for what they're posting, what kinds of posts, what do they look like? Are they just words? Are they images? Do they have links? Do they not have links? Do they, you know, are you commenting afterwards? Are they in your group? Are they on your business page? Are they on your profile? There's so many different things to think about when you're doing a strategy. You can't just hire some random social media person because half the time those people don't know this, the big picture strategy. Yeah. They just know how to post stuff. And that's yeah. not helpful if neither one of you are talking strategy. <clears throat> yeah. Strategy is really important. It goes back to that thing you were saying. It's like pick, you said pick four strategies. And for me, I always go, um, you know, what are your primary expressions? What are your sole expressions? How have you come here to express yourself? And what are the strategies that you can do that, um, that have those sole expressions? So for me, I'm speaking. And so I do a lot of speaking. I do videos. It works really yeah. well. Some people are writers, and so then do lots of writing. Other people are connectors, so do lots of networking. It's like pick your top four strategies. I have seven <clears throat> strategies um, because I like the synergy of the word seven, but four, four is a good place to start um, and, and work them until they work because sometimes wouldn't you agree that part of marketing isn't just what you do to market. It's matching your niche with your message and the offer. And a lot of times it's not the activity of that what you're doing, it's the message of what you're saying. So yeah. if an email is not working or a web page isn't working or a post isn't working to get engagement, change the yeah. word. It's about yeah. the wording. So a lot of people yeah. just, like I said, do it and then think it doesn't work when they didn't really do an effective job at it in the first place. Yeah. <clears throat> so but mm -hmm. one of the biggest questions yeah. that I get asked, which many of the people watching might be asking and not really knowing they need to ask this is um, they, uh, they don't know what to say. They don't know what to say on social media or in a video or in a blog post or whatnot. And I'll give you a quick tip on how to develop content. So in my mind, an easy way to develop content, anybody has content <clears throat> and especially for blogging or video or when you're sharing stuff on social media, it can be your personal thoughts. It can be opinions. It doesn't have to be based in fact. You don't have to go research for 14 days to create an article that you can cite a reference on, for God's sakes, right? Just go with what you've heard. Like, I heard, you know, all this talk about whatever topic, you know. Well, my thoughts on it are blank, 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 blank. And these are the three things I think you should have. That's an article. Right? You don't have to get all fancy schmancy on it. Just get some content out. The purpose is to get more content out in many different ways, um, not just to like uh, agonize over the one piece of content. It's not about one piece of content. One piece of content is not going to make or break you or get a client necessarily. Yeah. It's the multiple yeah. things that you put out there that elevates your expert status and credibility that then positions you as the go-to person in your industry. But if you yeah. just dabble here and dabble there, you're not going to be that expert credible person that you really know you are and should be. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that is one online strategy that's still free that is working 
and that's uh, Facebook live streaming. So get your content out by Facebook live streaming. Yeah. And if you show it, charge. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. I said hurry up and do it before they charge money, right? Well, exactly, because trends on online trends are always free and then they charge. So if you don't jump on them as soon as they start trending, then by the time you're ready, then you know it, it's too late. So and and next year uh, I've been told that YouTube is already outperforming Google as a search as a search engine, and even though you know YouTube is owned by Google, um, and that more people are spending more time online watching videos. So that would be one online strategy that I think is trending um, and that's going to do really well. But as soon as look, as soon as the big guys get on and 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 you and you have to start charging for it and or and what have you, then that trend will go. But um, don't dilly dally on getting your content out on video is what I'm saying really because that's one of the free online um, ways at the moment that is working while all the others are drying up. Um, awesome to talk to you, Katrina. We got shy people, nobody asking specific questions, and I know it can be overwhelming. It's like so much uh, information coming at you, but so I recommend that you really do go check out uh, Katrina's free gift and look at the links in the uh, comment section there. And, uh, and and I've also put the, the tips that we've been um, talking about, I've put them and numbered them in the chat so you can see that and uh, and start uh, strategizing about what your four what you're gonna what your four marketing focuses are gonna be so you can streamline your focus. Is there anything else you want to leave us with, Katrina, before we go for the day? Hmm. Or evening for you. Right? Uh, just I I don't want you to be so overwhelmed that you're stuck and you don't get started. What's worked for me is to hire a mentor. I've had mentors for the last 13 years, and there's no way that I would have been able to implement as much as I could. I don't care if it's me or Nicola or somebody else. You you have to get somebody. Honestly, the fastest way is one-on-one. -on -one. Like Get somebody to just look at what you're doing. They should look at the big picture. They should look at everything, and they should be able to analyze, okay, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're not doing this, you're not, okay. So what you need to focus on is one, two, and three. And that's the fastest thing to do because you trying to figure it out and listen to teleclasses and listen to webinars and then go back and rattle it out in your brain and wonder, and then your brain is supposed to spit out the order of importance of what you're supposed to do. That's not really that effective. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. invest the money in you because it will take you a long way when you finally get the answers that you need to get. And, yeah. you know, an investment today will reap rewards forever for you. Yeah, absolutely. So. And I want to make a really big distinction between doing another program versus hiring a coach or a mentor. Because I had an email from somebody yesterday saying, oh, actually, I had two emails from people saying the same thing. Oh, gosh, not another program. And I think you need to make a very clear distinction between the programs that are being sold online that teach you something very specific for a very short period of time and those and actually hiring a coach that can strategically walk you through every aspect of your business to get it up and running and humming and 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 not just piecemealing. I'm going to do this training course, then I'm going to do that one, and then I'm going to do that one. And the next thing you know, you're juggling all of these different um, balls with no strategy, whereas yeah. a coach or a mentor can help you with the strategy to streamline what it is you're focusing on. So I want to make a very clear distinction between the online training programs and actually hiring a mentor and a coach. Because I've done it every step of the way. Like every year I decide who am I going to have as my co-pilot in my business to reach a certain goal. I know the goal I want to reach, and so then that helps me figure out who's the best person that's going to help me reach that. And I do training programs. But, there's, but I have somebody who's like my eagle, looking at all aspects of my business that I'm not even thinking about. And then, of course, I do that for my clients because I'm a business mentor. You do that for your clients because you're a marketing mentor, yeah? Right. Cool. Awesome. So I think that there's a lot to download, and some of you might want to listen to the replay, which is great about uh, Facebook Live. I highly recommend you start doing it yourself. And, uh, and we're checking out. This is Nicola Grace, the mission mentor, who's been speaking to – have I got the right – no, that side. i got to do that side. <laughs> Katrina Sawa with Jumpstart Your Marketing. Great. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. See you. Bye-bye.